Well, we didn't exactly pack light, but then the plan is to stay out on the water for the better part of three weeks, exploring some new anchorages up in Desolation Sound. For the past eight years, we've kept our boat moored in Ladysmith, located on Vancouver Island. We like the location as it provides easy access to the southern Gulf Islands and a doorway to locations across the Georgia Strait. Speaking of which, our crossing was well-timed as we had light winds and calm seas, taking us into our first anchorage of Smuggler Cove. So the next morning, slightly embarrassed, but a little wiser when it comes to setting our anchor and stern tie, we pushed on towards Desolation Sound. One of the areas we were keen to explore was Von Donop Inlet, located on Cortez Island. This interesting stand of trees almost could pass for a sentry's post guarding the entrance to the inlet. There is a pinch point close to the entrance and a rock is located about mid-channel, so care must be taken to pass on the right-hand side. At the far end, there is a good-sized bay, and we settled into a nice, quiet spot. After a quick meal, it was time to do some exploring. We were certainly not expecting this warning. Looking at this running shoe, I'm wondering if the hiker didn't get the message about the wolves. So if you're looking to stretch the legs and uh, want to get on a nice little trail, I'd highly recommend uh, this one. We were uh, dropped anchor over in uh, Von Donop uh, Inlet and uh, about a kilometer or so and uh, that puts you at the north end of Squirrel Cove. Some amazing scenery along the way, massive trees and a really unique trail. Well worth the effort. And if fishing is more your speed, well, there's some pretty decent fishing to be had right at the mouth of the inlet. Needless to say, as that fish was being cleaned, a nearby eagle was keeping an eye out for any potential scraps. Still, you can't underestimate the eagle's ability to go out and bring home its own dinner. Same can be said for the kingfisher. They certainly don't have to rely on scraps for their next meal. Well, it was a pretty full day. Time to get some sleep. Looking back now, I wonder with that thunder and rain, it was a precursor to Murphy's Law. <laughs> because we ran into some technical issues. And I get that. This is boating. That is going to happen. Uh, what did happen was that our windlass started to act up and uh, literally was jumping off the deck in terms of bringing back the uh, chain and feeding it uh, through the... Uh, the receiving hole into the chain locker. 
At the time, we really were scratching our heads just what was going on. It wasn't until we got back uh, to uh, our main uh, uh, home of Ladysmith that we were able to tear into it and figure out what the problem was, but we'll have more on that later. Suffice to say that we were uncomfortable dropping anchor at any of the remote anchorages up in Desolation Sound. So the challenge now was to find places that we could uh, literally go into, um, like marinas, and tie up to a dock as anchoring was out of the question. So with weather conditions that matched our moods, we headed north through the rain up to the Toba Marina. So after enduring a couple of days of uh, fairly steady rain, uh, the clouds lifted and with that, so did our moods as we uh, started to think of a plan to get back home to uh, Ladysmith. But till then, uh, we decided we would just sit back and enjoy this absolutely stunning scenery that the uh, Toba Wilderness Marina can offer visitors. We decided we would take a different route home uh, compared to last time when we were up at the uh, Toba Wilderness Marina and this was through the Waddington Channel and uh, wanted to check out uh, the often referred to Walsh Cove as one of the premier anchorages uh, up in the Desolation Sound area and uh, as we passed by yeah, absolutely it looked amazing and our hearts kind of sank a little bit as we knew we just weren't able to drop an anchor in this location. Although given the number of boats uh, currently in there, uh, albeit it was early morning when we passed by, uh, we were telling ourselves that, well, we couldn't get in anyways. So we continued uh, down the channel and uh, we're hoping uh, for uh, an opportunity to maybe uh, poke our nose in at another um, spot which was Roscoe Bay and you can only get into that uh, area at high tide and then you're in for at least a good number of hours until the tide uh, floods and you're able to get back out but same story it looked incredibly busy uh, I, I think it was fair to say that even though um, our good friends to the south, the American boaters, uh, unable to come up and enjoy the Gulf Island and Desolation area this summer because of the COVID situation. Uh, it gave an opportunity for many local boaters to get out and uh, of course being mid-July, uh, this was prime boating season up here anyway. So many of these anchorages were very busy as we discovered. After spending a night in Pender Harbor, we got up bright and early and started our journey across the Strait of Georgia and uh, were met by uh, several whales off in the distance, which uh, really made the morning crossing a special time.
As we neared the midway point of the strait uh, near Halibut Bank, uh, weather conditions started to uh, kind of go downhill as the winds increased and the waves also started to pick up, which made the final part of our journey uh, back into uh, the Gulf Islands uh, a little bit lumpy and bumpy. 